Previously on the bill. So where's Des? Still being there. The gunman was right, no. I swear he was going to shoot me, and then my dad put himself forward. We oh, didn't want to see you get hurt, did he? You made your choice to have another man's child. Yes. You all to move back now. Uh, clear back. Take no prisoners. That's a secret. Listen. Any idea how Gary's bearing up? It's got to be tougher him thinking his dad might be in there. No, he's not said anything. He's not really one to wear his heart in his sleeve, though, is he? Excuse me. I can't find my parents. I think they're still in there. Your parents? They live near where that guy's got the gun. How are you this morning? I slept much last night. Understandable, under the circumstances. I can't believe Kathy's treated me like this. She got engaged to my ex behind my back and chose not to tell me. I mean, did you think I'd never find out? I know yesterday was hard to swallow, but you have to remain focused. You can't afford to let this hinder us today. Yeah, I know. No second thoughts about exposing Kathy's role in all this. I can't believe I've got to sink to her level. It's not about sinking to any level. It's about the truth. Are we in agreement? Yeah. Good. Uh, this lady's just arrived, flown in from Heathrow. Her parents live in the building Jules Ellis is occupying. She says they haven't been evacuated. I thought we got everyone out. Not Mum and Dad. I spoke to her an hour ago. Well, she hadn't a clue what was going on. I don't think she's been taking her insulin. She's diabetic? Yes. She should have injections twice a day. And if she doesn't? She'll collapse, go into a coma. And it's their golden wedding anniversary? Yes. I've flown over from Malta to take them out. And what are their names? Jocelyn and Frank. And can you take me through the telephone conversation? Well, I asked for Dad to be put on. Mum said he'd gone down the shops for their tea. The thing is, he can't go out. He's got arthritis in both knees. Besides, he'd never leave Mum alone. Why is that? She's losing her memory. It's Dad who makes sure she takes her insulin. Can you give me that telephone number, please? The Brooks are in there. Next to Ellis? Oh, better than that. Underneath. I've talked to the super and there's not enough time for him to get down here, so I'm going to have to make the decision whether we go in or not. And get that DS brand from SO19 over here. And tell the negotiator I want an assessment on Jules Ellis. Yes, ma'am. Oh, come on, Mrs. Brook, come on. Sergeant Murphy, have a seat. Thank you, sir. Is this about the area car crash? Yes. But I thought I could rely on you to spread the word that Reg is expected to make a good recovery. And Des? Forensics are still combing the scene. But as yet, they haven't found a body. There's no easy way to say this. But it looks like Des was caught in the heart of the fire. Which would explain why forensics haven't found anything yet. I thought you should know what was happening. Thanks, sir. Sandra hasn't spoken to her dad for two days, so we have to assume that Mrs. Brooke has missed at least four insulin injections. That's a bad sign if she's confused already. Which is why you want to go in and pull her out along with Mr. Brooke. Who's in a wheelchair. Anything else? No. Right. Let me outline your options. The Brooks live here, directly below Ellis. For starters, you won't be able to use the rear entrance. So the warehouse development backs onto a railway. So you'll have to go in the front, which is more exposed. Particularly as Ellis has a vantage point from the top of these stairs. But the negotiator's told us he's spending most of his time in the storeroom in the attic. You think he won't hear you? And what if he does? 
The negotiator said he's tired and erratic and subject to mood swings. And he's already shot a man, Inspector. Perhaps you need to think this through. Look, I've got a seriously ill resident in need of medical treatment urgently. We need to act now. Now, we come to events on the night of Dr Preston's death. Your account has been consistent throughout, but the prosecution want to portray you as the gold digger. And Kathy Bradford's evidence yesterday supported that by turning out on your credibility. So what do I do? Well, I want you to tell the jury that Kathy came around after Owen died. But she didn't put that in her statement. I'm not interested in the statement. So you want me to say she lied? Well, it's the truth, isn't it? She did come around. I thought we went through this yesterday, Polly. Are you still with me on this? Yeah. Right then. I'm going to change the order of things. Uh, I'll be calling your character witnesses, PC Stamp and Sergeant Ackland first. This will allow us to build up a picture of our version of events gradually, ending with your account at the end to maximise impact. Any questions? No. Let's just get on with it. Thank you very much. As Mrs. Brooks GP has confirmed the diabetes and there's more. She's in the early stages of Alzheimer's. My priority is to contain Ellis and any threat that he represents. If you go ahead, you could put all that into jeopardy. And if I don't, an elderly woman could die. That's not your responsibility. But what if I've got a realistic chance of doing something about it? Mum, yep. I've just spoken to the negotiator and Ellis has asked for some medical supplies. He wants uh, bandages, swabs, sterile dressings. He says it's a flesh wound. Himself or his hostage? He wouldn't say. This could be the cover we need to go in and get the boxes out. Possibly. Right, we're going here. Well, I'll do it. I'm SO19 trained. Are you? And everything you've told the court about working with Miss Page is based on how many years' experience? Twelve years. I imagine you really got to know her well over that time. Yes. Paul is an excellent officer and a great colleague. One of the best. Thank you. PC Stamp. Over those twelve years, you must have become very good friends. We did. How close did you and PC Page become? Well, in your statement, you said, Polly Page has no side to her. She has time for everyone. Well, the truth is, you wanted her to have more time for you, didn't you? I did have some feelings for her, yes. Did you ever tell her about them? A few times. Well, tell us about the last time. We were trapped on a job together. I thought it'd be the perfect chance to tell her how much I liked her. I hope that maybe she felt the same way. Did she? Excuse me? No. So she turned you down? Yes. Well, police officers aren't exactly famous for their pay packets, are they? It had nothing to do with that. Polly said she wasn't ready for a relationship at that point. It's odd, then, that she embarked on a relationship with Dr. Preston quite so quickly. Could it be that you're not in the same financial league as Max Wyatt or Dr. Preston? back to their property for the time being. What? what? That is unheard of. Gary, we shouldn't be here. When he said something was about to kick off an operation. Go back to the station, Gary. Oh, just tell me, Kelly. All right, look, Inspector Gold asked me and Nick to go in there and bring out a couple of residents we missed last night. What, and put my dad in more danger? No, it's all being planned. SO19 are going to provide cover. Gary. You describe Polly Page as having a vulnerable side. What do you mean? I mean that she knows how hard life can be from personal experience. That makes her a good police officer. If you knew her so well, 
Why didn't she move in with you when she became homeless? Well, she probably wouldn't have wanted to, but I should have offered. She was also eligible for police housing and loans, was she not? Yes. But she chose not to take them. She chose instead to move in with a terminally ill man. Is this a new service the police are offering? Go and live with vulnerable victims of crime? I think not, Sergeant Ackland. And wouldn't PC Page, working in the uh, community safety unit, be particularly aware of the dangers of that? Yes. And yet, on her first day back at work after sick leave, she meets Dr. Preston and decides to take advantage of him. No, she met a gentleman in a lot of pain and she wanted to help him. Isn't that what she'd like you to think? No, it's what I know. So why didn't she say in her first police statement that she helped him to die? I don't know. So this good officer lied. Do you find that acceptable? No, she made a mistake. Thank you. No further questions. The negotiator will ring Ellis and tell him that the medical supplies are being delivered and keep him talking. Then your two move in, under cover of six SO19 officers, armed and with ballistic shields. They'll group outside whilst Mr. and Mrs. Brooks are retrieved. Only when they leave do you deliver the supplies, again with an escort. Come on, why are you doing it? The old thing's too risky. I made it clear that you stayed back in the station. You know how trigger happy this is. Well, this maniac has already taken a pot shot at Cameron. I have looked at all the circumstances and we have to make sure that Miss Brooks' parents gets out of there. You're the one who recruited my dad as your snow. The sole reason we are in this fantastic situation is because you decided to waltz merrily into the middle of a CID operation. Have you forgotten that PC best? Now get him out of here. You've told us about your relationship with Dr. Preston. Uh, let's move on to events surrounding his death. When did it become clear he intended to take his own life? Well, he only told me just before the end. But it'd been on his mind for a long time. How do you know that? Owen was a doctor. He knew exactly how his cancer would progress. He was a proud man, too. He'd lived life to the full. He didn't want to end up relying on other people. How did you feel when he told you? Devastated. But you can't have been surprised. No. What did you say? Well, on one hand, I thought I should try and dissuade him. But on the other, I knew it was his choice. Didn't being a police officer help? Well, I thought it might. But it only confused things. Because Owen asked me as a friend, not as a police officer. I'm not saying that any of this is right. It's just... Well, you can't just turn off your feelings, can you? But you could have always walked away. And let Owen die alone. What kind of friend does that? If you really care about someone, well, all you have in the end is a belief, you know? You're doing the right thing. Did that belief tell you to stay to the end? Yes. Did that belief tell you to pass him the syringe? It was what he wanted so much. He couldn't reach it. He didn't have the strength. So I gave it to him. I thought I was doing the right thing. How did you feel after he died? Shattered. But you're an experienced officer. Forensically aware. You must have known that you'd left fingerprints on the syringe. I wasn't even thinking about that. There was no reason to worry about it. 
What did you do? I called Kathy Bradford. She said, don't move, don't touch anything, that she was coming round. And she did. P.C. Bradford attended the crime scene? Yes. Hi. The DCI has just sent us down with Dad's hostel. Why? We're looking to see if we could find any clues as to where he might be if he isn't a hostage. What did you find? Nothing much. Imagine your whole life in a couple of suitcases. Yeah, my heart bleeds. You look like you're having a great time. We were. After Kathy had left the house, I did what she said. I told Sergeant Murphy I'd found Owen dead, the syringe already in his arm, and that I'd called Kathy, and she told me to contact the police. What happened the following morning? Well, I came in to work to the station to write up my statement. What were you going to say? The truth. I decided I couldn't lie. We did. I know. Kathy persuaded me. What did she say? She said I'd be destroyed. My job, my life, everything. And more than that, well, I'd be implicating Kathy too. Why didn't you ignore her? I was in shock, grieving for Owen. I guess I was looking for guidance. So you followed her advice? Where else do you turn but to a friend? Then... You changed your statement again when they found your fingerprints on the syringe. I admitted what I did then. But you still kept secret PC Bradford's involvement. I'd been arrested for murder. The stakes had just got even higher. I'm, why drag Kathy into the investigation? You did all this. To protect her. I thought she was my friend. Tell me about this friend. She made me feel good about myself, gave me confidence. I mean, I, I didn't ask for Owen's ring. I was overwhelmed by it. Kathy said it was a gift. Even suggested I should get it valued. And then when Owen left me all his money, well, Kathy helped me buy the flat and car. Well, she said it was a blessing. The money wasn't important to you? No. Owen's friendship was all that mattered to me. Is that why you offered it to Josh Preston? Yes. Not to buy him off? No. But you can understand how it looked. I don't care how it looked. I know why I did it. You thought you were doing the right thing. You see, I don't deny I helped Owen to commit suicide. And what's more, I'd probably do it again if I had to. Owen was a wonderful man who deserved a long and happy life. Now, I couldn't give him that. But I could help him to have a peaceful death. My mistake is listening to Kathy. Because if I'd have confessed right from the start, I wouldn't be standing here now. Have you got everything that George asked for? Time two, just to be on the safe side. And the radios have been switched to talk through so that we can have continual contact. All right. We better get going. Come on. We'll be back before you know it. Come on.
If your Bradford's got a lot to answer for, stand it by while Polly got herself into this mess. You know, she specifically told me that Polly knew about Max. Some friend, I keep that from Polly. Still, let's hope that Polly's coming clean is enough to get her off. Yeah, well, the tough bit's yet to come because the prosecution's going to go in really hard now. Kathy! Well, your secret's out now. Pretend to be friends with Polly all the time you're stabbing her in the back. I had no idea Polly was going to say those things about me. And you're right, I'm supposed to be a friend. What's she doing? You lied in your statement. Polly would have come clean from the start if it hadn't been for you. Hey, I'm just as shocked as you. Polly's changed a version of events three times. It's her back against a wall, not mine. And I thought I knew her. Why is she doing this to me? Stand by, stand by. Go, go, go! Go, go! Lethargic and confused. You're the postman? No, Mrs. Brooke, we're the police. Can we come in? Well, you look like the postman. Frank and I are getting lots of cards today. Flowers, oh, too. Right. Good, good. Oh, good. Oh, 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 Mrs. Brooke, you're right. Frank, hurry up. It's the taxi. It's all right, Mrs. Brooke. We'll, we'll get your husband. Find her medication. Right, do you want to take a seat down here, Mrs. Brooke? I don't usually send two postmen. How long have you two been married then? Not as long as you. Fifty years today, Frank and me. Congratulations. Nick, none of this has been touched. Uh, when was the last time you had your injection, Mrs. Brooke? Frank? Frank? Where is he? Your husband, Mrs. Brooke. Do you know where he is? Right, you find her other shoe. I'm going to go and find Mr. Brooke. doing this should be out by now. Mr. Brooke. Can you hear me, Mr. Brooke? Yes, ma'am. Looks like a heart attack or something. Let's just get moving, shall we? Nick, we need you out of there. Mrs. Brooke won't leave without her husband. Oh, hang on. I'll get Sandra Brooks over here. I don't think we've got time for handholding right now. Nick, do whatever you can to get Mrs. Brooks out of there. We'll send two more officers in. If that means telling her about her husband, then do it. Actually, Mrs. Brooks happy to go now. Yeah? Yeah, she doesn't want to keep the taxi waiting, do you, love? Yeah, hold her. Mom, the situation's resolved itself. We're bringing Mrs. Brooke out now. Come on. Sergeant Smith, you can go ahead with the delivery. Right, Mrs. Brooke. Where's my husband? He's right behind us. Is he still getting dressed? Yeah, he wants to look smart. Get him. Get Frank. Where is he? Get Frank now! He's not feeling too well, Mrs. Brooke. What do you mean? Mrs. Brooke, calm Frank? down, please. Frank! Uh, Mrs. Frank, Brooke! No. Oh, this doesn't look good. Nick, what's happening? Too late. Compromise! All police, put the gun down! Now! Stand still! Everybody keep still! Stand still! You are. Put the Arms gun down! Face. Now! What's going on? Look, mate, look. I'm unarmed. No, but he is. No, a lot of you! Look, it's your neighbour. She's really ill. What? They just want to take her to the hospital, that's all. They make them put the guns away. All of them! Look, everyone just back off! <laughs> just let them go. Why should I? Because you can have me instead. 
Okay. Why not? You heard, Mr. Ellis. What the hell does Smithy think he's doing? He's offered himself as a hostage. He's doing what? In. Now like, close the door. Get up to the attic. Yeah. Oh, come on, move! Say, so, can't you get up and fall on the floor? And your vest. That's the way. Now sit down there. Sit down! What's that? Hey, give us your vest. Right. Nice one. Congratulations, that was uh, quite a performance. You can stop pretending now. I wasn't pretending. This is the third version of the story you've told us. Why should we believe this over the others? Because it's the truth. I don't think you have any idea what the truth is, PC Page. It changes from day to day. Not this time. The truth is that your fingerprints were found on the syringe. That is a fact. You can't deny it. You administered a larger dose of morphine than would usually be the case to Dr. Preston. No. The truth is that when you let it slip to Josh Preston that you were present at Dr. Preston's death, you tried to buy his silence. No, I didn't. And the truth is you are a desperate woman with your back against the wall. No. And the only way that you can try and limit the damage is to drag your friend down with you. So you expect us to believe that you, an experienced police officer, who has to make important decisions on a regular basis, could be so easily influenced by a colleague as to falsify a statement? She said it was the only option I had. No, there was another option. That was to tell the truth from the start. I wanted to protect Kathy. She doesn't need protecting. Kathy Bradford's statement has been consistent the whole way through, hasn't it? Hasn't it? Yes. Because Kathy Bradford is the one telling the truth, not you. She's the innocent party in all this. What? She has been a loyal and trusting friend. How can you say that? She didn't even tell me she'd got engaged to Max. It's because she knew how you'd react. You think this is about revenge? No. I think it's about jealousy. I think you are jealous of an honest friend who has an honest relationship with an honest man who you ruthlessly set out to exploit the same way you exploited Dr. Preston. No. You just can't stand to see her happy, can you? And you would do anything to destroy it, including telling as many lies as necessary. I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. Everything I've told you is the truth. No further questions. If it pleases, my lord, I should like to recall P.C. Bradford to re-examine her on the evidence given by the defendant. The court will adjourn for 20 minutes whilst I make my decision. <coughs> Inspector Gold, you know that Sergeant Smith volunteering himself as a hostage goes against all protocol. His priority was to get Mr. and Mrs. Brooke out alive. I told you my priority was to contain the gunman. But your officer deciding to play action man has undermined that. He's given Ellis an exit strategy. He's forced our hand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's me sorted. Because <laughs> now I've got you. It's good to see. Yeah, it's great. Because the first thing is... All those guys outside, you're going to have to take away their guns, yeah? Get them right out of my face. I won't have to come out all guns blazing, because when they've gone I can think straight, yeah? Yeah, nobody try to stress me out. Really get myself sorted. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, really get me out together. And do what? Who asked you to talk? I just don't think that you're making much sense at the moment, Jules. You need to be thinking clearer. Shut it! Okay. Right. You should know. I've put my officers on standby. Standby? Sergeant Smith will never talk Ellis down from his perch. We need to bring this to a conclusion. Force an entry. What, with one of my officers in there? I don't think so. With due respect, your officers have done nothing but jeopardise this operation. And with due respect, I am the senior officer here. But I think you'll find SO-19 have control of the scene, Mark. You will not go waving your gun about without my say-so, Sergeant. He's got an hour. Then we're going in. Put me through to Superintendent Okara, please. You know something? Never meant to cause no grief. No one will believe me, mind, but it's the truth. No, I'm sure it is. As if you care. Well, no one plans to get into a situation like this, do they? So how'd it happen? I got boxed in. It was Cole's fault. He made me do the job. Sure. No, he made me. And it was one bad call after another. Maybe he set me up, eh? I had my way of go back to zero. Start over. Well, perhaps you can. Yeah. We don't have to make it any worse, do you? I'm not giving myself up. No way. I didn't mean that. I meant that... Sit down. Just that you could give up your other hostage. Alan Best. <laughs> you guys still think I've got a vest? <laughs> nice one! So he's not here with you? That piece of scum. He was never here with me! That don't matter now, does it? Because I got you now. A real life police officer. You're my ticket out of here. So how are you going to do it then, mate? What's your big plan? Nice move, Inspector. Getting your superintendent involved. My boss has just told me to pull back. Look, I'm only trying to protect Sergeant Smith. We're all trying to do that. Oh, yeah? What I need to do is radio my senior officer. Oh, yeah? And who else? No, you see, it's a special frequency and I can talk directly to her. I'll get her to bring her car round. Right, make it a big one, yeah? Bulletproof. Okay. But that'll need to be requisitioned from the diplomatic division. It could take an hour or so. Right, and then what? We'll go out together, we'll get in it, and we'll go wherever you want. But there are two things that we need to do now. And the first is that I need to treat your arm and then I have to show my colleagues that I'm unharmed. Let me speak to the negotiator and tell them I'm okay. No way, put it down. Look, they need to know that I'm okay. Forget it. Mum? An update from the negotiator. You can't get hold of Ellis. It's not a good sign. Get your troops ready. Get away from the window. Turn round. On your knees. You made a sign. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I saw you by the window. Just stay calm. A secret body sign. No, I didn't. I didn't make any sign. Put his on. Come on, round the bar. Round the bar. That's the way. 
she think I'm thick? Hey? Do you think I've got you lot sauced? Hey? P.C. Bradford. We've established P.C. Page phoned you on the night that Dr. Preston died. No one's disputing that. Did you attend the crime scene? No, I did not. Did you advise P.C. Page to cover up what happened? No. Tell her to keep her story simple for the investigating officer? No. Well, what about her statement the following morning? P.C. Page wanted to come clean. Did you persuade her otherwise? No. She was in a state of grief. P.C. Bradford. Yeah. And you didn't apply pressure on her in any way? No. Now's your chance, P.C. Bradford. Are you really going to stand aside and watch your best friend be sent down for something you know she didn't do. Look. Yes? You didn't see how upset she was. Of course I wanted to help. So you made her change her statement? She was my best friend. She'd just been through this terrible, awful experience. Yes, well, we all know what she's been through. Let's just stick to the facts, shall we? Would you like a glass of water? Thank you. Answer the question, please. Did you force PC Page to alter her statement to protect yourself? No, sir, I did not. Oh, yeah. yeah. How'd the interview go? I wanted to answer his questions, honey. I did. But I knew nothing. That's not true. It is. My own dad, and I knew nothing. Gary. All I've got are these. A few old photographs. And the last time we met, I could have done something to change that, but I didn't. I didn't even give him a chance to try and make it up, wouldn't I? Don't be so hard on yourself. And why not? Spectre was right. It was my fault that all this happened. If only I'd have just stayed away, just kept out of it. You weren't to know this would happen. And what if it is too late, honey? Why hasn't anyone heard from him? What if he is in there and I don't get a chance to try and put things right with me, Dad? I'm never going to forgive myself. Try. Now it's time to make yourself useful. Where are your keys? <coughs> They're in my belt. Right. Are you able to continue? Yes, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't be like this. It must be tough to be suddenly exposed. Exposed? Yes. 
The truth is finally out. I don't feel exposed. I feel betrayed. My so-called best friend has just stood up and told you a hideous pack of lies. You're a professional officer, PC Bradford. Don't pretend you're shocked. Yes, I am a professional, but I'm human too. And I feel such an idiot. My bottom is thinking, why can't I see this happening? Another part of me can't believe it has happened. You want to know about my friendship with Polly? When we first met, she'd been through a rough time, then she met Owen. Things happened so fast, and before I knew it, we were like sisters. We told each other everything. Now I know she was just using me, like she did everybody else. And what she do now, facing a murder charge, she spews one disillusional lie after another, hoping something might stick. <laughs> All I ever wanted to be was Polly's friend. <laughs> oh, found out she'd lied in a statement. I felt so hurt, so wounded. Who was I going to turn to but Max? Only he knew what it was like to be betrayed by Polly. And then we comforted each other. And out of all the pain, Something wonderful, something pure happened. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No more questions. No more questions, my lord. <laughs> I try not to move, all right? <laughs> so how'd you do it? Guess. <laughs> At the van. Yeah, I lost control and he jumped me. Who did, Alan? No, the Pope. So where is Alan Best? How should I know? That needs stitches, but I'm just going to bandage it, all right? Right, whatever. Just get on with it, eh? <sighs> right, just do me a favour and keep some pressure on that one. Right. Are you good at this? Yeah, well. Hope you just go behind the wheel. Because they're going to be shooting at us. Try to take me out. I'm good enough. Do you want me to call the inspector and get the car brought round? Yeah. Yeah. But you sure you don't want something for the pain? What you got? Go, go, go. Mom, this is Smith for you. Suspects arrested and nobody's out. Good boy. Yes! 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 Cool as ice, right? Oh, like you could have pulled it off. But you did a fantastic job. I don't. What the hell were you playing at offering yourself up like that? Excuse me? Not only did you jeopardise the SO19 operation, but you put yourself and your fellow officers in danger. I accept that. But at the time, I thought it was the best thing to do. And it was. Quick thinking and calm under pressure are qualities I like to see more of. Thanks, Paul. Don't make a habit of it, Smithy. During the course of this trial, we have heard several accounts of the events surrounding Dr. Preston's death. Essentially, they come down 
to the two versions outlined by Mr. Palmer and Miss Barton in their summings up. Either this is the story of a close friend carrying out the wishes of a dying man, or of a manipulative gold digger abusing her position as a police officer to prey on vulnerable people. We have seen the friendship between PC Page and PC Bradford has fallen apart, but does that mean that the evidence of both is tainted? Or is one account more credible than the other? You must choose. But you must be satisfied beyond all reasonable doubt that the defendant killed Dr. Preston. You may retire. Court will rise. Come on, come on. You can't see it. Come on, out you go. Come on, out you go. Not the back, not the front. Not the back. Don't try and get yourself arrested because it won't work now. Out you go. Out. I can't go out now. Out. No, I can't go out there. They want me. Get out. Get out. Shh. And don't you let him back in. I mean, I've excitement for one day. Thank you very much. Don't worry. Oh. How's it going, Polly? Jerry have gone home for the night. Are you heard about Cathy, Mum? Cathy? She sailed Polly down the river. Oh, you'd have thought she was the one on trial. We had tears, we had lies, you name it. Well, she's right when she got back here. Cathy's back here? Yeah, she's just gone out with Julia. Everybody looked at me as if it was my fault. It's unbelievable, yeah. isn't it? Oi! Oi! June's just got back. She can take over if you like. No, uh, no, it's fine. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Doc. Hello, June Gold. Where's Alan Best? Oh, you think I'm going to help you, dear? God damn it! God! I don't think so, Sam. Come on! Yeah? Come on! Yeah? Shut up! <laughs> Get off! Yeah? Shut up! Come on! You're dead! Get off my shut up! Get in there! Oh. <laughs> Look, I pay, I pay for anything, right? Just stay there! Oh. At least the judge was on my side, eh? I just wanted to talk to her and she ended up before. Oh, really? Oh. Look, I, I mean, I couldn't lie, could I? Kathy, can you just give me oh. a hand here, please? Yeah, I'm just saying. Let's get him cuffed and back to the station. Come on. You're very pretty. Come right? on. Look, if he wasn't in the flat with Vellis, then where is he? I don't know, Gary. He would have phoned me. Yeah, but would he, though? Look, maybe he's at the pub or something. Gary, there's still no sign of your dad. Look, I'm sorry, ma'am. You know about what I said to you earlier. I... Yeah, but Uniform have found the van that Ellis escaped in. Now, there's evidence of a struggle, a large amount of blood, and a bullet hole in the door. Now, we're doing everything we can to find him. I'm in my office if you need me, all right? <sighs> OK, come on, get out. It's all right, I'll take over. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I just want to talk to my wife, man. Yeah, well, the custody officer will give you a right to... Oh. Oh. What are you doing? I think no one's going to be sick. Yeah. Watch it! Yeah. Yeah. Watch it! Yeah. Get back! <laughs> you stupid bitch! I told you I wanted to talk to my wife! Action. For the first time Don't since worry, its lady. pilot in 1983... Cue them. ...the bill is live. Thanks. Quite nervous, yeah. It's an episode you can't afford to miss. Thursday, the bill live. You killed that guy! Gary, go!
Previously on the bill. Dad, Dad. Okay, Gary, there's still no sign of your dad. My own dad and a new nothing. At least the judge was on my side. <laughs> Watch your hands! <laughs> no! no. <laughs> Get back! I told you I wanted to talk to my wife! She can do it! No way out of this, Mark! Shut up! Come on, hurry up! Come on! Okay, Mark, you said you wanted to speak to your wife, yeah, Mark? We can organise that, can't we, Kathy? Yeah, yeah, that's fine, yeah. But fine. you've got to let go of me first, okay? You, you just get him off, like, you try anything funny and I'll cut your throat! Okay, 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 okay. See? See? Okay, so. Fam, that's his van. There's a bullet hole through the door, blood everywhere. They think it's my dad's. I mean, they've searched the whole area, but there's no sign. That's a good thing, isn't it, Gary? Well, why did he get into the van instead of me, eh? The stupid, stupid idiot! So Ellis still hasn't said anything. No! Oh, Gary, come here, will you stand still? Oi! Oi! Get back away from the door! What? Anyone? Who holds a gun at my head? And I'll do what I have to do. I'm hungry. I want something to eat. Alan Best. You're gonna tell us where he is now. Obviously we know you didn't have him hostage in the flat. We found your van. It had blood in it. So you might as well tell Are us you what- death? I said, I want something to eat. Have it your way. Come on, here! Come on! I can't. I can't do the work. Well, you, you do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're done. We're done. Okay. Right. Uh, I, I want the keys. The keys to the car. Not until you've let it go. All right? Okay, I'm warning you. Okay, fine, fine. Here they are. Here. Give up to her. <laughs> take it, take it back. You see the police? Stay on the floor. Stay down now. Open the back! What? Open it! Okay, okay, okay. It's, it's my house and all, you know, I paid for it. I'm sure you did, Mark, I'm sure you did. Every penny! Okay, okay, Mark, if that's what you want to talk about, let's talk about it, yeah? Did you? In the boot! What? In the boot! Kathy, don't do it! You mustn't blame yourself, darling. It's not your fault. You won't know this was going to happen. Your dad chose to do what he did. No one made him swap places with you. No one made him get into Ellis's van. No. Okay, darling. Right. Where are you going? Ellis. Oh, Gary, listen, wait. You're not doing yourself any favours. Kathy, no. No, you shut it, you. Look, you've got me. What more do you want? They said get in. Okay. Kathy, look, once you get in that car, I'll get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Oh, for goodness sake, Gary. I mean it. Just get out of my face. Look, you're just winding yourself up. I want a word with Ellis. Sorry, Gary, no can do. Said what he's done with my dad yet? No. You soon fix that. Uh, no, you won't. Gary, come on. But I'm my... not letting you in there. My dad could still be alive. Bleeding to death somewhere and you've got... Ellis! Ellis! Gary! Where is he, Ellis? What the hell have you done Gary! to me? Look, I'm really sorry, mate. Yeah? Yeah, well, you can shove it. Oh, Shut up! And the next time you hear something from me... We're doing all we can to find your father now. Either you make yourself useful, or you go home. What's it going to be? Stay, sir. Right. Have you contacted all the members of your family? Family? To see if they've heard from your father. We need to be certain he's missing. Why? If we accuse Ellis of abducting Alan, and then he turns up Boys. sitting at home... Oh. Honey, can you double-check all the local hospitals? Sir. Let's keep a close eye on him, OK? Sir. Calm down, all right? Calm down! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! No! Listen! Open the door! Come on! We can talk about it! Move back away from the door and stay there.
sign up. Listen. If Alan Best dies and we find out he could have been safe... You what? I will have you. No matter how long it takes. I'm scared. Really scared. Who cares? You seen Kathy around? No. No, what she did to Polly. Stitched her right up. She stood in the dock telling lies. Said that Polly had betrayed their friendship. Polly had tried to make a change of statement. It just went on and on and on. You never heard such rubbish. I'll tell you that. Help! <laughs> Julia said there's a guy in the van with okay. a knife. Nick, don't get out of the yard. Right, okay. What are you all about now? Please. Okay, please. There's a guy. Oh, well, well, knock it off. It's all right for some, isn't it? Ooh, fat chance. Yeah, Alan Best phone. We traced the location. Ah. What's that? This is Des's radio, recovered from the fire. Yeah, I reckon from the heat of the fire, that's all they're going to find. Anyway, good luck. Cheers. All right, Gov. Yeah. Off the door road, Gov. Good. Gina. Right, OK. Gary's dad. Forensics are trying to establish the amount of blood in the van and whether one person can lose that amount of blood and still be alive. Gina, until we find a body, I'd like to think of Alan as still alive. Well, whether he's dead or alive, I still have to involve MIT. They're on the way down. Oh, great. What? Well, even if he wasn't Gary's dad, He's still your informant, and he's missing on our patch. I want to interview Ellis. OK. What? We'll start the interview with Ellis, and then we'll see. Sir. She's been what? How? Gina, what? What are you talking about? What's he doing? Can you see anything? Mark! Mark, can you hear me? Easy, mate. No one's going to hurt you. Juliet! Juliet, are you all right, Juliet? Mark! Open the door, put the knife down and let the officer go! Give me the keys, I want the keys to the van! The keys? He wants the keys. So how did he get the knife? I don't know. Well, where was it? It was in his sock. In his sock? Yeah. Didn't you search it? No. So why didn't you call for a van? Uh, Juliet searched him, Juliet. Sam, right, brief okay. Why, have we got Hi. Nick and Gabriel in the yard, sir. Oh, it's Dad, I'll go. Okay, the man outside. Kathy, what's his name? Uh, Mark, my name is Sir, but I've tried to talk to him, he won't listen. We're about to in the van, is he? He's in the middle, he can't get out, but he won't let her out either. Okay, what's his history? Well, he's drunk, he, he was smashing up a phone box. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know he had a knife, sir. Kathy, <laughs> calm. What we need is calm yeah. and focus. Yeah, fine. Right. Dr. Smith, I'll need your SN19 expertise yeah. on this. Yeah. 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 yeah, all right, Kathy, shut up. Just call. Patronising with a wheel. Just call. I've been on this all day. I didn't know I had a knife. Shut up! Right, any second now, Mark, we'll have the keys and this will all be sorted, I promise. Hey, help! Of course it is, mate. Look, just calm down. If you hurt her, it's going to change everything. He's in the middle section and he wants the keys. Juliet, wouldn't let us speak to us, sir. OK, right, if we need to go in, I want it fast and simple. That'll be the signal. Right, my boss is coming, Mark. I think he wants to talk to you. Right, we can't see Juliet, sir. OK, round the back. Right. Mark! Mark! My name is Adam. Now, the quicker we can resolve this, the better. Just get me the keys! Yeah, Mark, and that's being taken care of. In the meantime, is there anybody you'd like to speak to or contact? You've got one minute! Mark, where's DC Becker? I want the keys to the van! Her name is Juliet, and I need to speak to her. 30 seconds! Mark! What are you doing? Mark, slow down! I have a set of keys. You can have them. All I'm asking is to see my officer. 24! Mark! Okay, Mark. I don't want any trouble. We'll do it your way! DC Web MIT. Out! Go on! I've told you before! I need somewhere to go. I ain't got anywhere to go. Oh, excuse me, I think they're expecting me. Who? CID. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll call them now. I used to work here, you know. I'm a policeman. Charlie Foxtrot, Diet Tango. Just let me have a warm, eh? OK. Well, five minutes now. Sit down. Oh, hello. Yeah, it's Marilyn in reception here. I've got, um... Nicky Webb. <laughs> OK. 
No, thank you. And the ambulance is on its way. Ah, oh, here's Sheila. We're in good hands now. Okay, let's have a look. Can we get something to put under our head, please? Nick, your coat. And Kathy, we need the first aid box from the FME's office. No, get it out. No, no, don't touch the knife. I want it out. Take I know, but trust me, we need to leave it where it is. Take it out. Full nine. Yeah. Uh, Marco and Nevin. Address. I'll take over, thank you. <laughs> oh, not even a little trouble with TMA. Oh, no, that's not much to ask for, is it? Address. Well, apparently, I haven't got one. <laughs> but nobody stops me getting into my house, so no. So you thought you'd take it out on Juliet, then, did you? <laughs> she said I hit that I never touched her. She's laying at all liars, say one thing, do another. She was stupid. <laughs> ah! What about DC Becker? Oh, oh. The officer you stabbed. <laughs> I never stopped that. What did you do then? That's it, Mark. So where'd you get the knife from, Mark? <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she threw the dinner at me and played the knife everything. <laughs> that was a wedding present, I didn't deserve it. <laughs> Why'd you hide the knife in your sock? Because the plate wouldn't fit. Ah! Hey, it wasn't it, Dan. Yeah, well, the officer couldn't find it. <laughs> well, maybe they didn't look properly. What? So they both searched you? Hey, hey, why are they down? Oi, <laughs> <laughs> stop it! Oh, Gabriel, I said that's enough! Where's the ambulance? It should be here by now! <laughs> push me in the van! Yeah, no, just push me in the van! Okay, I just want you to raise your legs for slowly, just a fraction. There, okay, you're okay. Now, I'm just going to pack it on, Julia, just to keep the pressure on, okay? You see? Go on, go. See, there, because you keep the pressure on. I was searching the back of the car and he knelt down and I shouted a warning to her, sir. Kathy, anyone... You are not helping now. Will you quit it and move away? Go, go, go. Are you sure? Go, go, go. Just a few sips, okay? Ten Look, minutes. if we put her in the area car, I think we can get her to St. Hughes quicker that way. It's best we don't move her. Okay, but if the ambulance isn't here soon. <laughs> Why are you coming through? It's busy in here tonight. That's no lie. Right, Anna, the nurse is going to assess you, and then I'll call the police. I don't want them here. Don't worry, love. You're in safe hands I'm now. Have you mind that you're going now and sit down? I'm just here to help. It's not his fault. What well, is his fault? Easy. Is that you? Is this sister? Has this happened to you before? Deal with that pumpkin. Get him to sit down, Anna. Uh, Has this happened to you before? No. Anna. I know what you were thinking and you were wrong. You couldn't be more wrong. Right, well, tell me. He, he forgot his medication, that's all. That's all. He never meant to hurt me. Anna, I'm sorry, but I beg to differ. Look, this is none of your business. I don't need to speak to you. I don't need to speak to anybody. We can stop this happening. No, I, it's fine. It's nothing. I'm all right. It, it, I'm fine. I think you better go. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll get a cup of coffee. Look, is there a friend I can contact? No. Okay, do you want coffee? Love one. Could you get up that much? Could you? You've been told to sit down by the nurse. Now sit. <laughs> When did Sir Paul have his baby? Yesterday. It's a little sip, all right? I don't think so. Anything else? Yeah, one minute, Tony. The ambulance has been nearly ten minutes now. Sheila, this is a major RCA at the high street. It's completely blocked. It's best we don't move her. Okay. Look, I'm sorry about this. One way or another, we'll have you fixed up soon, okay? Thanks, sir. Do you not keep me informed? Tony. Have we party this weekend? Just, just, I can make it, doesn't it? There'll be plenty of others. I so wouldn't have to dress up. You're all right, darling. Stopped. What? In the backyard. Sounds painful. They're waiting for an ambulance, Gary. Karen! Karen? Easy, Gary. Ryan. Yeah, it's me again, mate, your Uncle Gary. Look, will you put your mum back on, mate? Well, I know she doesn't, mate. But if you just tell her, it's very, very important. Social services have let him back at home. Yeah, but she still won't forgive me for phoning him. Karen! Karen, no, 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 listen to me. Look, it's not even about Ryan. It's Dad. Look, it's... 
is serious. He's in trouble. Look, we think he might have been shot. Oh, Karen! She doesn't want to know. Maybe she's right, eh? Good riddance to him. Gary. Well, the pain and misery that man's caused me. If he wants to go off and do something suicidal, then that's his own stupid fault. You don't mean... Well, don't I? Fine, whatever, suit yourself! I thought you were supposed to be checking the hospitals anyway. Oh, well, hey, hey, what's going on? The room's not big enough. Oh, thanks a lot. Oi. <sighs> Look, I know this sounds like crap, but I don't know what you're going through. When I swim, I see, yeah, there's one big difference, though, isn't there, Ken? You love your son. But my dad, I... Well, how could I just forgive him for smacking me mum around, eh? How would she feel if me and my dad suddenly became bestest buddies? Came back to try and sort things out with me. I wouldn't listen. I never even gave him a chance, you know. But look, look, Gary, listen. You haven't done anything wrong. All right? Stop blaming yourself. You mustn't give up hope. <sighs> Look, when I thought I might lose Alex, I sort of, well, not so much as a prayer, I, I made a kind of deal with myself. I found myself saying, please, if only Alex is safer, I promise I give up the the booze, the fags, I go to church every day, you know. The list just, just got longer and more desperate, you know? Yeah. But the thing is, I kept every single one of those promises. All right, they're bits cobblers, but... But what I haven't forgotten, didn't forget, is that you were there for me. No. No, I mean it, mate. Hey. You ready? Yeah, 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 I'll be right with you. Look, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but your old man's phone is back in use. What? Well, that no, He might not be using it. Ken! Yeah, all right, I'll be there. Look, uh, I've got to go. Take it easier. <laughs> Trick or treat? Oh, come on! Any sort of guy, mate. Beat it, mate. I should be at home. Oh, hi there. I'm DC Sharp from Sun Hill. Is your mum and dad in? No. What, is there anyone else in the house that I can speak to? Uh-uh. Okay, then I wonder if you can help me. Now, listen, this is very important. I need to speak to some... Oi! You sure you got the right mobile number? That was Alan's phone as soon as I dialed. He's gone upstairs. Yeah, let me out here. No, 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 Rob. You can't just kick the people's door down. Yeah, but what if he's in there right now, flushing it down the loo? Thank you, right. Watch yourself, watch yourself. Come on, come on, come on. Oi! Oi, stop! That's my house! What the hell do you think you're doing? Look, I'm DC Thatcher. What? I'm DC Stark. Where's Zach? No, it's, Zach. it's okay. He's inside. What? And you were going to kick the door down? We need to speak to him. It's very urgent. I don't care. He's only 11. Okay, you listen. Kick someone is missing and we think that your son might have his mobile. Mobile? He doesn't have a mobile. Zach! Zach, it's Mummy, darling. It's all right, keep you. Oh, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Uh, Juliet, she's been attacked from the arm. Is she okay? Yeah, yeah, I think she's fine. Anyway, uh, how are you cope? How's... Sorry, what well, try to say? How's it going? It's fine, team? thanks. Thanks to the DCI putting a good word for me. Is it about? Uh, no, I don't think he's been here today. Thanks. Any news of Paul? No, the jury's still out. Can't believe that's murder, not manslaughter. She should never be in court. When you see her, give my best, yeah? Oh, well, thanks. Huh? Look who's back. Larger than life. DC Webb. Now, big shot with MIT. Miffy. It's Miffy. How are things? Yeah, better. Thanks. Uh, Mickey said the new job's great. Let's not pretend, eh, fellas, OK? I was assaulted. I was sexually assaulted, all right? Well, I ain't got leprosy and no-one's gonna catch anything. So if you don't mind, I've got a murder suspect to see. He's being interviewed. He's what? Yeah, he's in with the DI. Oh, did uh, Tony tell you about Juliet? Yeah, yeah, just now. Right. Let's start again with what we know, shall we? Alan Best is dead. You shot him and you dumped his body. No comment. Do we have to go through this line by line? We've got your gun. We've got your van. Have you seen the state of the seat? No comment. Well, it's covered. 
in more blood, fibres and bits of human tissue than forensics know what to do with. No comment. You might want to say something, Mr Ellis, because you are going to prison. But if you cooperate with us now, the less your sentence is likely to be. Well? No comment. Have you had enough time with your client, Miss Wharton? Yes, thank you. Good. Ken. Wasn't afraid, was he? Brave man, Alan. To step in and take the place of his son like that. So tell me, how close were you to Alan when the gun went off? This close? Here? No. Here. They tell me that a bullet makes a kind of wet sound when it hits the body, is that right? Or if I mix that up with a long range shot? Stuck in a van, I guess you've been close enough to look him straight in the eyes. He knew what was coming, didn't he? Oh, he had some guts, Alan. I bet he didn't even flinch. You don't have to Any last this. words? Any message for his son? Or didn't you give him the chance? Waited till he wasn't looking and then... He wasn't even looking, was he? And from the amount of blood, I guess it wasn't a clean shot. Took him a while to die, did it? There was blood everywhere and he, he just wouldn't die, would he? He needed a finishing shot. Side of the head, bang! I'd like to speak to my client in private. Request notice. So tell me, Mr Ellis, what was it really like? OK! DC Web MRT, Dion Nixon outside now, please. Interview suspended. Nicky! We've also found Alan Best's wallet. Yeah. No, but the kids clammed up won't say where he found them. They've only been gone for five minutes. You're going to miss the firework display now. I know, Ken. We're bringing him in now. OK, thanks, Ken. Juliet? No, what? What's up? How's Gary? Gary? He found his dad yet? Not yet. Poor Gary. Yeah. We had no reason to think he had a knife, did we? I mean, when you searched him, you didn't find anything, did you? Yeah? Do yourself a favour and go away. Yep, turn around. OK, got it. Sheila, you tickled my mouth for me. Sure, of course we can. What the hell do you think you're playing at? We were right in the middle of an interview. Well, I could ask the son of you, Gov. Excuse me? You were the one who called in MIT. You didn't even bother to wait for us. Well, we don't have the time, Mickey. Alan Best is Gary's dad. So? So he could be bleeding to death. That is, if he's still alive. With respect, Gov, the amount of blood he's lost, there's no way he's still going to be alive. And when my boss finds out what you've done, he's going to go mental. Well, Superintendent Lacaro has asked me to do a preliminary interview, and that is what I intend to finish. OK, OK. That's why I'm here. Fine! Sam, with respect, you don't tell me what to do anymore, OK? Excuse me. I'm going to see. Not on my patch, you don't. What happened to you? Been in the wars again, Mr. Carver? Yeah. Just the cut this time, is it? Yeah. Not, Not hurt that. anywhere else? I was no. Before you turn that just one minute, we will see you as soon as we can. It's a busy night. Yep, always is this time of year. I can imagine. <laughs> you should see the burns. Anyone would think it said, light fuse and stand in the way, idiots. Hold that bag, squeeze that tight, yeah? yeah? Are you ready? Hello? Yep. Yeah. Research, I'll research if we want. It's my boy, it's such a problem. Okay. Okay, okay. Sheila! Okay. Yeah, Polly I'm here, was my I'm best here. friend, I couldn't do anything like I'm that. I'm coming with you. I'll be there, Sheila. Okay. What live TV? Me? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. It's not a good time, I'll, um, I'll, I'll ring you back later. Bye. You never guess what I have been asked to do. <coughs> Terrible what happened, isn't it, eh? Yeah. What? 
Oh, nothing. I'm losing my marbles, that's all. Let me take some of them. Where's Anna? Gone to x ray. Oh, right. Is your coffee there? It's a bit cold. Oh, blow. thanks. Can do with this. It's full fat, June. I'm sorry. It's all I had. Get a decent cup of coffee in this place. So, what really happened this time? It was a shelf. Mm -hmm. Stupid thing. I'll... I got it halfway up and it looks so easy when they show you on the tent. Mm -hmm. It's gonna need cleaning and possible stitches. Okay. We'll be back in a minute. Jim, I th thought I heard your voice. And you know, it doesn't even matter if you stole it. We just need to know how you got it, okay? Zach, did you find it or did someone give it to you? Did they make you promise not to tell anyone? Zach! Now listen, Zach. This phone and this wallet, they belong to a man who might be very badly injured, even dying. Tell them. Say something. Don't just sit there. What do you think of Polly's chances? Oh, I thought they were fine. Until Kathy took the stand. Yeah. Kathy. I, uh, I don't think the jury were fooled, though. No? That must have been some shelf. <laughs> there it was. Don't ever ask me to put one up for you. What brings you here? Oh, yeah. Domestic. She was beaten black and blue, mainly where it doesn't show. How's Marie? Yeah, yeah, fine. What, you think Marie did this? Well, no, she didn't. Jim. For heaven's sake, Jim, don't you think I'd tell you? Well, I hope you would. Well, then. All right, I'm sorry. Marie, she's not having a good time. Oh, really? Oh, don't be like that, Yeah, well, Jim. I'm sorry, but she was actually quite abusive to me today. But I was the one who put her in the taxi when she turns up at the court drunk. She could barely stand. Oh, him. come on, she isn't that bad. <sighs> OK. Sometimes. But when your first husband beats you up, your daughter's murdered, and you begin to think that... Well, the person you're married to doesn't know whether he wants to be with you or not. Oh, Jim. I mean, look, you can't be 100% in love with someone 100% of the time, can you? You Okay, we got it. Other way! 28 year old female stabbed in the left upper quadrant of her abdomen. Life still in six. Blood pressure's 86 over 40. Pulse rate 120. Sats 92% of the 10 litres. Set 500 mils of fluids. Let's get a transfer on my count. One, two, three. In blood I want those for cross matching, eight units, FBC, use the knees, LFTs and clotting, and one litre of gel effusing. What's the name? Juliet. Juliet. Hello, Juliet. All right, darling, you've got hands now, you're going to be fine. You're going to be all right, Juliet. We'll need more venous access. Since I've had a look, I want plain films of her abdomen, OK? Just going to put them on. All right, Juliet, everything's going to be fine. Have you talked to her? Well, don't you think you should? Look, in a couple of weeks, maybe, perhaps it'll all blow over. I mean, we've only been married for six months. Whereas you and I have known each other for, what? 20 years. <laughs> oh, you've remembered now, have you? Last time, you said it was only 15. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I thought, terrific. You didn't even notice me for the first five years. Well, that's not true. Even on that first day, I thought. Oh. You didn't show it. Well, of course I didn't show it. Well, why not? Why not? <laughs> you weren't so bad yourself. Oh. Oh, thanks for telling me. <laughs> <laughs> See, I always thought you fancied PC Lytton. <laughs> Was it Taffy Morgan? Taffy Morgan? <laughs> D.I. Galloway. Oh, no, 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 please. <laughs> he always used to call us wooden tops, didn't he? Yeah. But if it hadn't been for him, 
I might have been out of a job on that very first day. I thought clipping a kid around a year was what you were supposed to do back then. Well. <laughs> hey, do you remember that woman we found dead in the bath? Yeah. Luckily, of course, you were one of the best puppy walkers. Well, she was okay. <laughs> a long time. Yeah. What? Oh, I mean, if she'd have been, I don't know, a, a blonde 20-something, you know, or somebody you could have had children with, then, I don't know, as painful as that would have been, maybe I could have understood. But Marie... Careful, Jim, careful. No, why should I be? What have I got left to lose? Come back here and sit down. Sit down! I'll just have to leave you here then, Zach. Is that what you want, me to leave you here? Let them lock you up? Is that what you want? Then tell them. Say something because I don't know what I'm supposed to do here, Zach. You tell me because I don't know. Oh, give up! I think maybe if I'm not here... Would you, you like a tea, coffee or something? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, which way is... It's just over there. Thanks. Now, Zach. What are we going to do with you, hmm? I'm wondering whether yeah. we should be able to no, ventilate no, her or something. Uh, maybe we should. Can someone get a blood test? Maybe we should get some extra help. Her GCS is falling. Juliet, okay. open your eyes. Juliet, open your eyes. Take out. nice deep breaths. Take nice deep breaths, Juliet. Open your eyes for me. Come on, Juliet. Uh, surgical registrar, 28 year old yeah. female with a stab wound to the abdomen. I think she may have ruptured her spleen. Can I get her up to you? Right. Uh, I didn't kill him, I didn't shoot him. We was attacked. Attacked? Yeah. I was supposed to meet someone. But when we got there, two men jumped us and they shot Alan. I don't know what happened after that. Two men? Yeah. Who were they? I don't know. They was wearing them. Um, that on balaclavas. Who were you supposed to meet? I can't say. Afraid of what they might do? Yeah. Right. Why didn't you tell us this before? Wouldn't be because it's complete and utter crap, would it? No comment. <laughs> you have no idea how hard it was for me to go out with you in the first place. You know, I don't just mean professionally. I mean, I mean personally and emotionally. Oh, there I was, I was suddenly feeling very, very happy and yet at the same time feeling well, let's just say, I never thought being happy was anything I had a right to be. A right to be? I don't understand, Jim. You left me for an, an unstable, middle-aged woman who is drinking herself to death. I think the least you can give me is an explanation. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Is it something about where you found it? Did something scare you? Is it something about your mum? Something you've done? Something in the wallet? Something in the wallet. There was money. Zach, did you spend it? He stays with his father about once every three months and of course there he's allowed to do what he wants, goes to bed when he likes, has to come home to his boring old mum who goes no, no, no. I think perhaps I should go back in there. No, 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 leave it a little longer, yeah? yeah. It's uh, Liz, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Rob, by the way. Hi. And I 
Where's the kid? Hey? Well, where did he find it? My dad's wallet. Oh, Gary, just leave it here, mate. What? He still won't say? Gary, just... just give me two minutes with him to... Gary! This is Zach's mum. Just leave here, man. Sorry about that. Mrs. Clark. Yeah. Oh, good boy. Oh, oh I'm so sorry, darling. I'm so sorry. Regis Lane. Uh, I'm very worried about that blood pressure. She must be having some. Can I have another bag of normal saline, please? I wonder what's happening in theatres. Absolutely. I've run a lamb in Germany. Is she coming over? Yeah, she's flying out tomorrow. Did you hear about Dez's radio? Yep. I think it's all they might find. It's a terrible wait. I... He was a good officer. Yeah, well, let's hope we don't lose another one, eh? Yeah, OK, then. Well, you tell me, Sam. What was all that about, eh? You listen to those tapes, Mickey. That'll tell you what it was all about. Ken and I had Alice on the ropes until you put your foot in the door. Great timing, Mr. MIT. God, you broke that interview at the worst possible moment. And for what? All's okay, to bring a vital piece of evidence? No. You could have and you should have waited. Gary. Gary, you all right? Fine. When you went away, along came somebody who badly needed help. My help, and suddenly, for once, I had a purpose. I felt needed. And that's it. June, I... I panicked. It's a lot easier to cope with someone else's problems and having to face up to your own. And, and with you, I would have had to have done that. There was nowhere to hide. June, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think you should know one of your colleagues has been brought in. Who? Okay. DC Becker. Come with me. Just a minute, just a minute. Arrest. We've had no output for the last two minutes. Have we got an We have, but assassins have dropped to 54%. Okay, let's continue compressions, then draw up one milligram of adrenaline IV. Squeeze a bag of jelly through stat. Can we get more access? Adrenaline 1 right. in 10,000. Chase the blood. Okay, we could have massive internal bleeding. Oh, no, I know, I think she may have ruptured her spleen. The abdomen's completely distended. I'm wondering whether she's actually perfect for that. Yeah, yeah. Blood's completely the adrenaline's not working. We're losing her. No, come on, Juliet. Come on. Come on, Juliet! No! 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 Come on, Juliet. That's three minutes. I think we should stop. Everyone agree? Time of death, 2049. Thank you, everyone. Now, you sure this is the right place, eh? Yeah. All right, Zach, stay in the car with your mum, yeah? Is that okay, Liz? Thanks very much. What? You ready? As ever. Yeah. He said he had a mobile ring. He says he found it in the bag with the wallet somewhere in here. Right. So I'll go. you are. Now you can do your trousers up, mate. Now we're searching the area for a body. I don't suppose you've had time to notice anyone or anything suspicious, have you? No, no. no, no. Go on then, get out of it, will ya? Please. Sharpish. <laughs> Things people throw away. 
Eva, over here. Yep. It's sounding best, all right. Yeah. Looks like he's been there a little while. Last thing we needed tonight, wasn't it? Trust me. No, 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 no. Ring it in. We don't want Gary hearing over the radio. Yeah. Poor kid. First Des, and now. Yeah. I thought she was fine. I mean, we were even laughing and joking in the ambulance. So young. So quick. Oh, no. What a waste. It's not fair. No. If anyone, it should have been me. What should have been? Sheila, you don't mean that. Don't I? Oh, come on, you've still got me. Yeah. So I have. No, it's the same thing. No! Juliet's just died. My husband's left me. I'm carrying a dead man's baby. I don't think Tea and Sympathy quite covers that. Do you? Jim, I can't find Anna. She didn't come back from next week. I think she's gone. Anna? The domestic assault, June. I'm busy. Ref's fantastic. Massive internal bleeding. There was, there was nothing anyone could do. Fantastic. Uh, excuse me? Yes. I think my husband might have been arrested. Right, your husband. What's his name? Mark. Mark Nevitt. Mark Nevitt? What's the matter? He is here, isn't he? Fantastic. Juliet. I didn't know her that well, but... Oh, Jim. <laughs> you got to get home. I don't... I don't have to. Yes, Jim, you do. If it was ever going to work between us, it would have worked by now. Here you are. Jim. Marie, you okay, love? A colleague of ours has just, just died. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Juliet Becker, she was in CID. Oh. Well, uh, I was going to say I'd made us a nice dinner. A very nice dinner. Steak. But of course, if you'd rather stop I here I don't to... think I'm going to be very hungry. No, no, of course, I understand. Mm. There's nothing I can do here, so... Home, is it then? Yeah. Cupboard door. Yeah, I just opened it and he went smack bang into it. Big lummock. Yeah. Just keep holding him. Uh. <coughs> hold him. Come on, hold him. What the hell is going on? Sir, let him go now. He's fitting, sir. He's holding his tongue. Okay. Cut your hands under his head and hold him. Oh, that's all right, don't they? Go. You've sent me out there, I'll be dead by dawn. Get your back. Get your back. Get your back. He had an accident. An oh. accident? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, he, he, he never meant to hurt anyone. He, well, some days he has bad days, but it's not his fault. Right. Uh, at work, this um, metal boom thing hit him, and uh, now he has these terrible headaches and seizures, and he can't concentrate anymore. He he, he can't w take work. Oh, oh, he gets so frustrated. Uh, and of course, as soon as he drinks anything, well, please, I don't want to press charges. I'm afraid it's a little bit more complicated than that, Mrs. Nevitt. Have you seen Gary? No. Read about his dad. Yeah, it's a real sickness. He's been dead the whole time. Looks like it, yeah. Poor Gary.
Gary. Gary, I'm afraid we've had some news, and it's not good. Well, he's the kindest, most gentle of I really am very sorry. Very sorry. I mean, I know things between you and your father have never been easy. If you need some time off... No, sir. I'd like to carry on, if that's all the same. OK, but if you ever feel... I'll like be you... fine, sir. Thank you. Was that it? Yeah. OK, Gary. Gary. <sighs> You're dead. I'm so sorry. Listen, honey. I never meant what I said before, you know. I know that. I am sorry. Forget it. Listen, Gary, if you need to talk about this, I'm here for you. You do know that, don't you? Yeah. Or alternatively, me and you can go out and get absolutely smashed. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm nearly finished here, so I'll, I'll be right behind you. Yeah, get Juliet's bike shifted. I need a drink. She. Come on, Sheila. Sorry, Gov. I'll go to the water. Oh, don't worry about it, Mickey. Nice suit. Cheers. Listen, if you see scumbags, all your smith. You killed my dad. So what does that mean? It means Des Tavern is still alive. I wish he was dead. And uh, what is the truth? Polly was never a very good cop. Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>